Hello, and welcome to Grug Gaming, and welcome back to our Let's Play of Dominions 5, Early Age Boom. So, in our last episode, we did an intro uh, to what we're going to be doing, and uh, the race that we're going to be playing, the fact that we're playing Ulm, the Barbarians of Conan. So, it is time for us to create our god. We need to create Grug. Grug will always be the god of whatever Dominion's game we play. We know this. Well, maybe not. We'll figure that out. But, first thing we have is we have to choose the physical form for our god. So, we have three, four levels of god here. We have the lowest level. And these are creatures like Enchantresses, this Freak Lord, an Arch Druid, uh, a bad bad queen, a werewolf lady. These are creatures that are not super powerful as far as godhood goes. So they have a dominion of one. And if you can't tell by the name of the game, Dominions, Dominion is rather important. What Dominion is, it's your your faith power would be the way to describe it, your godhood. The higher your dominion, the more influence you will have over territories that are conquered by your people. Um, it also has effects on your sacred troops, powerful magic, things like that. So I don't like Dominion 1 creatures because I think uh, having only a 1 Dominion, not that great. Now there's some stat things you can do to change them up and maybe in a different place we do something with them, but not in this one. Dominion 2, this is kind of your magical, mythical creatures level of godhood. This is things like giant god snakes, like the giant snake from uh, from the Conan movie. Um, you know, griffins, m magical boars, uh, dogs of the underworld, mysterious strangers, your ghost kings and liches, and your super birds. You know, kind of that, this is a magical creature with powers type level. Dominion 3... This is kind of your demigods. You know, when we think about something like, you know, think about the Greek gods from Mount Olympus, uh, which is what you see in a lot of these. Or think of some of your Norse-type gods, um, where you might have something like, I don't know, here's an example, Lord of the Forest. Um, you know, the god of forests right there, right? It's due with a spear. So they have a pretty good dominion, and they have a physical body that they can move around the map. So they could fight things like that. And then you have your Dominion 4. And these guys gain the, uh, the ability to have more Dominion, more God power, but the trade-off is they're stationary. And I personally, for uh, uh, this, we're going to use a stationary God. I know we did that in Ermor as well, um, but again, we're playing a nation that has got some some really tough fighters. I mean, these are barbarians who are looking for the Enigma of Steel and who know it. So we don't need a big old scary god to go with them. No, we're going to be out there, the power of man, with some magic. So we're going to choose a god here from the Dominion 4 level. And we could choose an oracle fountain or a monolith or this idol of men, or an idol of beasts, or even this weird idol of sorcery. But instead, we're going to choose the god form that actually has to do with who we're playing. If you remember, we had that special site, Ermensul. Well, that's actually going to be our god, the magical tree god of Ulm. So, an upside to this is that we also save some points on making our god in the point system because of he's our nation's god. So, <clears throat> Ermensul. Ermensul is an ancient tree that possesses intelligence, magic, and a very strong dominion. Being a tree means Ermensul cannot move around, but it also means it is tremendously difficult to kill in combat, and assassins are nothing to fear. The Ermensul is always guarded by three large bears. So we got our Ermensul, doo doo doo, and he has three great bears at his side at the start of each battle. So what is he? He's got three levels of nature magic. He's got 11 points for research. 
He's resistant to blunt and piercing weaponry. He's weak to fire. He's resistant to poison. He doesn't have to eat. He is forest survival. He gives us a supply bonus in our home world. He's also an ivy lord. If he summons ivy creatures, he gets more of them. And he's an innate spellcaster, which means in combat, no matter what's happening, he can always cast spells, even as he's beating the people to death with his branches. Hopefully he never gets into combat. So we're going to choose the Ermin Soul as our god. So what's that do for us? Well, that gives us some base... Uh, magic levels. It gives us base dominion. Again, cold one. Our guys like the cold. Uh, our dominion level four. The more dominion you have, the more influence we will have. Um, so here's what we're going to do. We can also choose to have our god be asleep to start the game. And by doing that... Um, it will let us have our god have more power and more dominion, but we won't get to use our god till later in the game. We're probably going to have him be dormant. I'm not sure if he'll be dormant or imprisoned. We'll look at how many points we spend. Now, a downside to this type of god is that for any magic you want, we need to learn above and beyond its base magic right here. Uh, we have to spend a lot. That tree in the background right there is just bugging me. So, here's what we're going to do. We are going to up his dominion, and I know that's probably going to get expensive, but a good dominion of like eight means that we'll be able to spread our dominion everywhere, and we're going to use him to bolster our, our country. So places we take over are going to get cold, um, and that's good again for our characters, because again they have that cold resistance and they don't care about snow. We're going to want to go ahead and we're going to make our places more lucky. So we're going to increase our luck so that when things happen, we don't get bad luck. We're going to increase our productivity so we have more resources. We're going to increase, let's see, what does order do? Uh, Recruitment points plus 10, resources. We're going to get our order up as well. And do we need some growth? Uh, let's see here. If we up this, what's that do? Ups our growth a little bit. And our income a little bit. And our supplies plus 10. I think I like that. So you can see we're at neg negative 65 points. So we want to get some more magic again for our god here so that we can make some magic items and we could get magic to fill in the points that we don't have but I'm more interested just in him being able to help out so we're gonna go ahead and make him dormant and we're gonna give him earth so that's gonna cost a lot in fact we're probably gonna be in prison or we're gonna take some of these down I think I think we're gonna take these two down a bit let's see what happens so if we up his earth magic to say level four um, and we up our nature magic to level four uh, can we get more Ooh, we could uh, we could get either of these Ooh, his nature we could get up to five and that gives our priests some extra spells like final rest and word of thorns they would learn so I think we'll do that. So we get those up. That leaves us a couple points. Um, we have nine points. It kind of that's kind of stinks. I wish we could could spend some more. But so this is going to give us some high powered nature magic. It's going to give us okay earth magic. So high enough that we'll be okay. And we're going to be able to add some bless effect to our sacred troops when they have a bless spell cast on them. So that'll make our shamans and the steel warriors better. So let's figure out what bless effects. This is something new for this game. So we can choose. We have. Oh, we have all kinds of stuff. Okay. So incarnate means this only happens when our god is on the board. So we can get 
Mountain Survival. Um, all our guys already have Mountain Survival. Why waste a point? Uh, and again, Reinvigoration. Uh, blessed units when they're blessed. Reconstruction, all sacred inanimate units. We don't have those really. Blessed units receive increased strength when they have a bless on them. Unbreakable, uh, they get protected from afflictions. Larger, all sacred units of size 5 or less will be larger, stronger, and able to withstand more damage. Bigger size, plus 30 hit points, plus 3 strength, minus 1 defense skill, plus 2 move. It's always active, doesn't require the sacred unit to be blessed. We might do that. That'll make our steel warriors just big dudes, big honking guys, ready to go. Or we could get resilient, low light vision, minor poison resistance, forest survival, uh, we, if we got a thing of death, we could get poison weapons. Or if we had a thing of a dominion of a magic scale of level 1, we could get on aging. Recuperation, our sacred units heal battle afflictions. And berserker, all sacred units are able to go berserk and when are wounded. I like the idea of larger. So, we'll take that in our sacred units when we make them. So our... Our antler men, our shamans, and our steel warriors will have extra hit points. Again, extra hit points, more strength, uh, a little bit easier to hit because they're so big, but they can move farther. So I like that. So that leaves us two tree power. So we could either give them forest survival, they already have that, or something to do with bless what the blessing does. Let's give them... How about Resilient? So they can withstand more damage. A little extra hit point there. Can't go wrong. And... How about Blessed Units? Uh, uh, again, we'll double up the hit points. Give them two extra hit points. So... Yeah, I like it. I like it. So we can make big, blessed guys. But really we're going for the, the Earth and the... Uh, what's this called here? This is called Nature Magic. And then our scales where we want them. And our good dominion. So this is how we're going to set up. So I think we are ready to go. We're going to hit OK. Name of our god is not Growth. His name is Grug. I've given the full name, Grugtar. Let's do it. Everybody worship Grug. All right, all praise Grugtar. So now we just set up our game settings for this game. Um, starting promises one, strength and independence. We're gonna leave all this the same. Our special sight frequency, we're gonna put at 60. Um, I think 50 is the default. Oh, we'll go to 55, just a little bit more. Um, we're gonna enable score graphs so we can see how we're doing. We're going to allow more people in the Hall of Fame. We're going to leave Global Enchantments at fives. I'm not going to touch any of this stuff. Random start research. Okay. We're going to leave Thrones of Ascension the same. Uh, you could change the number, um, but we're going to set it so there are six thrones and you have to take over all six to win. All right. Okay. Okay. We don't need a password. Renaming is allowed. We want to rename our characters. And I don't really care about cheat prevention. I don't know what that does. But what if? Whatever. All right. Here we go. So now it's got to generate our world. It's filling up the water. Making us extra dry capitals. Dividing the world. Making some borders. Putting in some rivers. Some river borders. Oh, yeah. I feel this. This is going to be great. Woo! Putting trees. Trees are important. If you don't have trees, you don't get oxygen. If you don't get oxygen, you can't have fire. Everybody loves fire. That didn't go where I expected it to, either. Alright, so, it takes a little bit, because of course it is generating our world right now. Any type of world generation like this always takes a tiny bit of time. 
Now we're just please waiting for fun. All right. Here we go. Grugtar, the god of Ulm. Spring in the year zero of the Ascension Wars. In the beginning, there was chaos. Out of chaos rose worlds populated with multitudes of beings. Wars were fought, kings and emperors rose and fell, and civilizations were built and crumbled as millennia passed. Gods, dark and strange, were worshipped in pagan temples. Still, there was chaos. The gods fought among themselves, bringing even greater ruin to those who would serve them. At last there was one, a being of great power and enlightenment, who rose above his immortal peers and cast them out of the heavens into oblivion. From chaos came order, and with order came peace, and the creatures of the worlds flourished. The age of chaos had ended. But now the wheel has turned once again. The supreme god has suddenly disappeared. Prayers are left unanswered and the smoke of offerings rises in vain to the heavens. No one knows why he disappeared, but it is certain that the people of the worlds are once again left without direction, without guiding principle, without order. Now is the time for the beings of great power and ambition to try their strength. The throne of the heavens stands empty, and only the strongest can rise to supremacy over all. Only the most powerful can ascend to take the place of he who came before. This is a time of great strife and suffering. This is a time of magic unequaled. This is the Ascension Wars. Dun dun dun. Alright, that's all we got. So here we go. Let's see how we're placed. Ooh. We got a coastal city. So a lot of this is new. So I'm not all late figured out. Super familiar yet, of course, with New Dominions. So we're going to see what we have going on here. So, there is Grugtar, God of Ulm. He is the Most High, King of Kings, August God, and the Master of Horses. I don't know what any of that means. So over here we have the different areas and uh, we can't really see what's in these different spots but it looks like we have a lot of water on our map the map does wrap around east to west but north to south it does not so this is the same place that's right here so we just got to remember that so we've got an ascension throne rather close the nice thing about the thrones is when you take them they give you a little bit of a bonus so taking the thrones can be very useful. We may have, looks like we have some coastal waters and some deep sea waters. Uh, let's see. Deep sea. Gorge. And over here, sea. And over here is just whatever. So, starting out, we have our population, the amount of supplies that we have, how much we're using. Our income, resources, recruitment, 259 of 2. Recruitment points for units. These values limit the maximum amount of units and commanders that can be produced per month in the province. Okay. No onrest. We have our defense right here. We can buy local defenders if we want. We could spend some gold. And we could buy some extra dudes. But they have a lot of guys that just start up here no matter what. Because it's our home province. We have got a smith. And we have got a dude here, a warrior chief, to start out our army. Okay. So, scoping it out, we want to take these areas, we want to work towards this throne and take it as well so what do we need we've got our scout so let's take our scout and let's have him travel over here and does it do the shift or is it control okay so regular click is gray sneaky line control for sneaky folks is red i'm a fighting line we want him to actually we'll have him sneaky this way or through the mountain uh let's go towards the village well let's go here so we can take here and take here, boom, 
we have already got our ascension throne. What is going on with these mushrooms over here? What is all this nonsense? Okay. Of course, we have these water areas that we can't take. Maybe we can recruit some amphibious dudes. We have also got a couple things to look at here. Uh, we have got some research. So we started out with Conjuration at level 1. Um, so level 1 Conjuration, we can summon some Cave Grubs or Tangle Vines. Can snare people. We can summon... Uh, cave Grubs sound great. It's, in, it's great. Crocodiles, etc. So we could go up this and we could summon a whole bunch of beasts would be option one. But what we actually want to do, I want us to research earth magic. Do, 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 do. Uh, or construction, is that the right one? So it's lesser, greater, magical, yes. So we're going to go through construction so that we can make great uh, magical items. Oh, we have level one already, cool. So we are going to research construction to level 2. So because we have level 1, we can make magical trinkets, and we can make a corpse man if we had this type of magic. But once we get to level 2, we can make more magic items, and then we can get up to level 4, and we can make even greater magic items. That's our plan. We're going to make some magic items. We can even make a siege golem. Ooh, cannot be cast underwater. All right. So, we're researching construction. There are no global enchantments. Magic resources. This is what we get every turn. Uh, we get uh, two nature gems, one death gem, and three earth gems every turn from our magic sites. We'll do army mercenary recruit in a minute. Inside of this province, we have a fort. Not under siege. It's a standard fort. It looks like it's a fortress. Cool. We have a laboratory, which is probably that guy right there. We have a temple to our god. We have one temple. We can convert provinces to our dominion. Our dominion strength is eight. Nine percent chance of our dominion spreading every turn. And cool. So this is going to help our. Dominion, the power of our gods spread throughout the map. I love how Ulm's got this, like, anvil on top of their flag. Again, we have the Wheel of Pain, and we have Ermin Soul. So let's go to recruitment. Actually, army setup. Here we have uh, our main character, who we're going to get renamed to Conan, once I remember how to rename them. Um, is, it, is it R? I feel like it's R. No. Nope, I don't remember. I'm going to have to find that out. Uh, it's not right-click. Space. All right, I'll figure out the naming here in a bit. That'll have to happen. But we have a couple things we need to do. One, we need a profit uh, for our religion. And we're going to recruit our profit. We're not going to have our... Well, maybe we do. Let's do that. Let's have our guy here, once I figure out how to rename him, he'll become a prophet for our for our religion. That sounds like a plan. But we're going to rename him to Conan first. Conan the prophet. We also need to go ahead and recruit some units. So we can recruit one commander, or as many people as we can, and then our things here now, our Shaman are slow. Do they still have the slow fast thing? How does this work? So commander points two. Okay. Got it. So we can recruit two commander points, eight holy points, 259 recruitment points. We have 116 resources and 400 gold. I see how this works. Okay. So we are going to need, I think... Again, the magic is the big thing. We need to start researching magic. So we are going to recruit one of these warrior smiths. Again, to research for us and get us some smithing going. 
And then we are going to recruit how expensive are folks here? Shield maidens are 14 gold, 13 resources apiece. 14 gold, 13 resources. 28 gold, 17 resources, 31 recruitment points. Woo! And regular dudes are 10 gold, 12 gold. All right. Here's what I'm thinking. I think we go heavy on some shield maidens so that we can get the most out of our gold. I mean, spending a couple extra gold, I mean, most of our, our soldiers here in armor are 12. I like the shield maidens. So we're gonna recruit some shield maidens. Uh, we can't recourse that many because of the resource requirements. And I think, uh, maybe we get some archers, or no, we just go with the shield maidens. Let's just keep going. Uh, can I get some more archers, though, actually? Oh, we get negative one. Ah, uh, there we go. Alright, so we're going to recruit some shield maidens and some archers. I don't know how, how difficult it is for, uh, like, army sizes in this new one. Ooh, this will be all kinds of new learning today. We'll find it. All right, so we're going to do some recruiting. So, we have our scout heading off right here. We're going to rename this Bessie to Conan and make that our profit. And then we're going to do our recruitment and that'll let us set up our army a bit more down here. So that is currently, oh, what's this going on? Two out of three squads. Ooh, this is way set up a lot better. How much we can lead? What's this? Require 20. Oh, look how well this is spread out over how the old game used to be. Cool. All right. Well, this gives us a lot of information. So, we have got everything kind of set up. Sea strength at 35. 25 units owned by Ulm of the province. Okay, cool. So, we've got everything set up to end our turn. When we come back, we will have the results from this turn and Bessie renamed to Conan so that we can make him the prophet. Until then, I'm going to say thanks for watching. Please tell your friends. Feel free to like, comment, subscribe, and as always, we hope to see you soon.